What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. B mother can see coming at you with the SmackDown review for 1924. We'll get to this review in just a few minutes. But first, I want to spend the opening teaser time that I have on a huge update, some breaking news on the first round of WWE releases for 2024. This usually happens around WrestleMania, right after Mania, and this year is no different. The first handful of WWE superstars that have been released, I have the names, and unfortunately we can expect more releases, most likely a lot more next week. But we can confirm, and this happened during SmackDown last night. This is how WWE likes to do this. <laughs> they like to put it at times where you can counter the negative news with what's happening on the show. And they hope that that's going to be the news that tops the negative stuff or the stuff that's unfortunate. So that's why they usually do also releases on the same day they do quarterly conference calls so they can tell everybody how they're recording record revenue when my business is booming. Don't worry about the budget cuts. So while SmackDown was on the air last night, we're finding out about these releases. Uh, Jinder Mahal has been confirmed to be a release by WWE. Jinder Mahal trying to make light of it. Mahal leaves a statement saying, I quit Maharaja out. Uh, but we can confirm that it was a release. Jinder Mahal um, for BC. And I know I was in the minority for this, but... I always liked Jinder Mahal. I totally understood why he didn't connect with a lot of people and why most did not want to see him on the TV. <laughs> but I always thought it was something about Jinder Mahal I always dug. So it's very unfortunate to see the dude go. Um, but I know for a lot of you guys, it was probably long overdue. But uh, unfortunately for BC, uh, Jinder Mahal no longer with the company. Also, um, even more devastating for this channel anyway, because I think so highly of this superstar, of this pro wrestler, of this person, Zia Lee. Zia Lee released by WWE. Zia left um, a, a much more heartfelt message um, for her time in WWE to the fans. I'll read that real quick. This is from Zia Lee after she got released by the company. Zia says, and I quote, It has been seven years, over seven years, since I joined WWE. And as the first female Chinese superstar, I feel incredibly proud. I am sincerely grateful to WWE and HHH for welcoming me into this big family during this valuable time. I have not only grown tremendously, but also learned countless invaluable experiences. Thank you for your trust and the opportunities you have given me to break barriers and set an example. A special thank you to all the coaches, colleagues, and staff who have helped me along the way. Your support and assistance have made me feel at home in a foreign land. I also want to thank all the WWE fans. Your cheers not only motivate me, but also make me feel endless love and support. Your backing is my strength. This journey with WWE has been wonderful, and I sincerely thank everyone who has been a part of it. This is not the end, but just a new beginning. Let's embrace more exciting moments together. End quote from Zia Lee. So I just, if you follow this channel for a while, you know how high I am on Zia. Not long ago, it looked like Triple H was going to give her a mega push two weeks Cool angle, too. She's knocking out superstars. It was blurring the lines. People thought it was very real, but it was not. Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae, they were playing their parts beautifully. And then within two weeks after that, she was starting a losing streak and then taken off TV and now released. Also, Veer Mahan has been released. Veer is someone who, who just seems like he's been trying to find his way to Raw for years now. <laughs> we don't truly know if he ever found his way, that, or he did, and then he got lost again. You would see Veer maybe once a year. All we would hear all the time is Veer is on his way. He just has to locate a map. <laughs> Somebody give Veer a map. Uh, Veer doesn't have to worry about it anymore. He's been released. Also, Sangha. Uh, his partner has been released, Zion Quinn, um, who at one point we heard they had big plans for, then those got shuttered, and now he's just gone. Um, and again, like I said, we're going to keep an eye on if there was any more names that were dropped. This was late last night that we got word on these names. 
Um, and again, unfortunately, we expect a lot more next week. So that's the unfortunate way we have to start this review. BC is going to get or brew a fresh cup of Dunkin' coffee. You guys are going to be taken to the opening electric signature. And when we come back, it's Tiffy time. Or, I'm sorry, it's SmackDown 41924's review. That's what it is. Which turned in to Tiffy time. We'll talk all about it. Come on back. Let's go, SmackDown 41924 New Tag Team Championships unveiled. I gotta tell you, Awesome Truth got done dirty. Waller in theory got the goods, bro. We gotta talk about those titles that were showcased last night. We're also gonna talk L.A. Knight, a massive L <laughs> last night. Massive L.A. Knight. Uh, but it had to happen. You cannot go to France because no matter who takes on Cody, they have to lose. Obviously, Cody just got that championship from a dude that's held it since 1947. There's no way Cody's losing this match. You can't have LA Knight again lose a big championship match outside the United States. I mean, they're going to start calling this dude the international idiot. There's no way LA Knight could go into that match. WWE backed themselves into a corner, found themselves in a pickle. AJ Styles was the only answer here, right? And they kind of volleyed off wins and losses, right? A big W for LA Knight on the grandest stage. AJ takes that loss. And then when it matters the most, but on a lesser stage, AJ gets the W. Guess it's a wash. No harm, no foul. We'll talk all about it. That match actually started SmackDown. And then... When it was all said and done on the show, and it was going over, I'll tell you who was going over. Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany made SmackDown Tiffy time. What time? What time? Get the watches out, because I'll tell you, it ain't Vader time. It's not Hammer time. Ain't clobbering time. It ain't Tony time. It ain't even Morphin time. Tiffany, Tiffany rolled up smack down in a ball right like stuffed it in a knapsack and tossed it over her shoulder now man smackdown became tiffy time she's walking around with smackdown on her shoulder where's smackdown where is it oh it's on my shoulder that's where it is <laughs> tiffy time we're gonna talk all about it man you guys know if you follow the channel for a while i am a huge supporter of Tiffany Stratton and a big supporter of her being in this match. And I know she ain't walking away with the title, nor should she be. But I'm telling you right now, that's the place for her. There are some times where you're going to find massive victory in defeat. And this is going to be one of those times for Tiffany Stratton. This is where she needs to be in France. You saw what they did in Australia for Tiffany Stratton. She's got to be in a big time match. Outside the U.S., they love Tiffany Stratton. I expect France to be no different. So we'll talk about that. There you go. It's a little bit of a teaser, even though we had to spend the opening teaser on some unfortunate releases. I still gave you guys a teaser. Let's jump into it. So as I said, the show actually started off with L.A. Knight versus AJ Styles. This was... Uh, there was high stakes on the line, right? The winner faces Cody Rhodes at Backlash in France. So, yeah, WrestleMania is big, but I mean, this is catapulting you to the championship. Bell to bell clocked in just under 10 minutes. L.A. dominated most of this match, and the crowd firmly was in his corner throughout. But thousands of night fans would be no match for the finger poke of doom. A poke to the eyes and a phenomenal forearm, and L.A. is looking up at the lights. A.J. Styles claims the W., and AJ Styles is headed to France to face Cody Rhodes for the gold. Again, a lot of people are going to be against this decision, but it's the only way you could go. You cannot put LA Knight in a situation like this because all you can then say is at least he's in a high profile match. Well, he was with Roman Reigns too, and that didn't pan out so well for LA Knight. He was just another number for Roman Reigns. And it was at a time where you needed to ascend L.A. Knight. 
not have them collect any W's. I say there's victory in defeat. For LA Knight, there was no victory in losing to Roman at that time. None. I will say this, LA Knight still has to be a part of this show in France backlash. That's the only way LA Knight would be done dirty if he was completely kept off the show. But then you have an issue of what do you have for him? You only have two SmackDowns left before backlash. What are you going to involve LA Knight with? It's almost like you gotta you got to keep him with AJ Styles, which is... What does that mean? A run-in? Is he the reason AJ doesn't win the championship? Then you're really dragging on LA and AJ. And I said from the beginning, I'm okay with this being a multi-month feud, but you have to feed it. You have to, you have to keep it interesting, right? Keep it intriguing for the audience. So somehow while you're setting up Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles next week, you also have to keep fueling AJ and LA Knight. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's the only way that I see this being really bad for LA Knight if he's completely kept off the show. But AJ Styles, what a victory. He is going to France to challenge Cody Rhodes. That's actually going to be pretty good. Later in the night, actually, let me just jump over to this. This was an hour number two. And then we'll jump right back to hour one. But in hour two, Cody Rhodes cut like a promo backstage in London. They were at a separate WWE show that was being held in London. And it looks like Cody had just gotten back from his match and he cut a promo um, and he says, and I'll paraphrase a little bit, but it's basically a quote. I look forward to defending against AJ Styles, a backlash Two Georgia boys fighting in the middle of France. <laughs> I don't know why that popped BC Two Georgia boys fighting in the middle of France. When he put it that way, I kind of got a little bit more excited for this matchup. And by the way, right after that, it was announced that the contract signing is next week for AJ Styles and uh, Cody Rhodes for the championship. So that contract signing is the same night as the WWE draft. So that's a huge SmackDown next Friday night. Moving on with this show. Triple H and Nick Aldis present Austin Theory and Grayson Waller with new tag team titles. H times three tells Theory and Waller they will now be called the WWE Tag Team Champions. I can't even keep track. <laughs> so I guess the, the raw titles that were presented to Awesome Truth, they're the world tag team champions, correct? Kind of like what they do with the women but I just, I get confused. I, I call them WWE World. I always put the two together. I, it's just confusing to have multiple championships in the same division. You know, it's one thing if it's the United States or the Intercontinental Championship. If they're totally a different title, I get it. Now I got to keep track of which is the WWE and which is the world. And if you ask me, the ones on Raw with, with, with the red, I mean, those are more brand specific, right? It has the red Whereas these ones, they didn't have to have the blue. But those titles on Monday night, they also have that hideous, just WWE logo is just right in the middle of it. It just, it, just, it looks, looks like it's scribbled on right in the middle of the championship. Whereas this one has prestige. It, it, it's regal looking, right? You got the little WWE logo maybe at the top. And it's very small, much smaller. It's just, if anything, the, the ones on Monday night look more like the WWE titles, and these ones look more like world titles. So maybe I got it backwards. Maybe he said these were the world tag titles. I don't know. My notes say WWE tag championships. I believe I heard it correctly. Either way, the ones on Monday night are obviously a step up from the crushed nickels and crushed penny titles that we had before. Anything is an upgrade. But they're still, I mean, they're not that sexy. These titles, out of the two, these are definitely the sexier championships. Waller and Theory made out like bandits while Awesome Truth got done dirty. <laughs> best part here is Paul Levesque McMahon goes to shake the champ's hands but they refuse they would not shake Triple H's hand um <laughs> I could go a million different ways with that so all this all this is pissed off right he's really sucking up to Paul Levesque McMahon he's like you don't ever disrespect this man ever again or I will make you and the championships go away 
<laughs> so Aldis announces the fatal four-way to decide the number one contenders will begin now. AOP versus LDF versus NCR versus the Profits from the Street. And the Profits take this match as they should. And this takes us out of our number one. And transparency, why I say as they should. I mean, when you look in this match, they're the faces. You have Waller and Theory. They're going to France. You have to have a top face team taking them on. Uh, New Catch Republic, they're still not really clicking yet with the majority of the audience. I understand, right? You leave the U.S., that's their best case scenario. But WWE's looking at a lot more marketing here. And the Street Profits, from the jump, I mean, we all pretty much knew exactly who was winning this Fatal 4-Way. I'm just tired of these matches where to find a number one contender, we're just throwing all of these tag teams in there together. We do it with individuals as well, with the singles titles. But these tag team titles, man, we have to... You're never going to have a true, fun division, an intriguing, captivating division... If this is how you're always going to come up with number one contenders, nobody has to really try every month. They're going to get a new opportunity, right? (laughs) Everybody is going to get thrown in a match at least once a month to see who's going to be the number one contender. That's that's not fun. You can have the best tag teams in the world. If you don't have a fun division, if you don't have fun storylines and fun feuds occurring, it's it's all for naught. So another fatal four way. Didn't we just do something like this on Monday too for those champions? Didn't we have like a triple threat tag title match or something? It was it was another multi man schmaz, I believe. This looked like nothing more than a battle royal in there. Eight dudes trying to go for two two championships, two titles, unreal. Anyway, hour number two. Hour two begins with Solo, Sokoa, and Paul Heyman, center of the ring. A We Want Roman chant kicks off. Well, that did not take long. Anybody thinking, well, will Roman work as a face right now when he comes back? Um, <laughs> there's an indication. Crowds are already chanting for Roman Reigns, man. Solo grabs the mic from the wise man. He introduces Tama Tonga. Tonga catapults a busted open Kevin Owens through the curtain and onto the top of the ramp. Owens has a gash. This was a great visual by the makeup team. Props. Literally mad props to the makeup team. Because they made it look like Owens literally had a massive gash. And surprise, they did that on Fox. USA Network, mm, past the 10 o'clock hour, maybe I could see that. They strategically waited to the nine o'clock hour, mind you. This was the top of the second hour. So I don't think they could get away with this at all from eight to nine. Fox would never allow that. But they still probably had to jump through some hoops and go through a little bit of an obstacle course just to have this approved. So Owens has this gash. This was really setting up Tonga to be a badass. And Tonga and Sokoa proceed to destroy Owens until general manager Aldis put a stop to it. And this was good, too. This was a a good little sequence here because Aldis put a stop to it. And he doesn't really break up a lot of feuds. So that tells you that he is just not having this. And then we went to commercial. When we came back, they continued it in the parking lot. I love when they do this, right? Because this takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, A lot goes into these little stunts that they pull. In the parking lot, you have two crashed cars. And Aldis is obviously pissed. Paul Heyman is summoned to the parking lot by Nick Aldis. Where we see two crashed vehicles, as I aforementioned. Aldis is questioning if Heyman knew anything about this. Because Aldis informed Heyman that one of the cars belongs to Kevin Owens and the others was Tonga's. Heyman claims he knew nothing about it, but Aldis doesn't quite buy it. So Aldis informs Heyman that if he doesn't get this under control, there'll be consequences. Heyman is left there stressed. His stress level, let's just say Heyman's stress level is extreme. (laughs) Because he knows he doesn't have that control anymore. He can only be the wise man to those that want the wisdom. And Solo and Tamatonga, they're going into business for themselves. 
And so he's looking at these crashed cars and he's like, damn, I, I, how do I control this? <laughs> he just crashed into Kevin Owens, man. I mean, if that's the beginning of Tama Tonga's reign. So this was just really well done. And again, I love how they continue it, right? At the end of the day, it's, it's a television show, guys. It's a show. It's an entertainment show. Whether you, whether you want to hear that or not, whether you want to believe fully that this is a real sport and we have to find out who the winners and the losers are and who is the actual best wrestler, skill for skill, technical wise, aerial, ground, ground game, grappling. Who's the best, man? Let's have a tournament. Let's rate these matches with six and seven and ten stars. At the end of the day, guys, all that's out the window. It's an entertainment show. It's a television show, and it has to have a flow to it, and you have to keep going back to big storylines. So I love how they did the beatdown segment in the middle of the ring with Kevin Owens. They went to commercial. When we come back, they continued it in the parking lot. It's another scene to this television show. Man, when it's done right, it's a thing of beauty, this pro wrestling thing. So really, that was probably easily the best segment of the night right there in the parking lot. Uh, aside from what we're about to get to, which was Tiffy time. That's coming up in a couple minutes. Before we get there, Santos Escobar defeated Carlito. This feud, and I put this in quotes, air quotes, right? This feud between LWO and LDF, if that's even what it is at this juncture, it has to end. It feels like it's been going on since 1941. And I'm cool with long-term storytelling as long as there's an actual fun story being told, right? Storytelling, short-term or long-term, it's got to be a fun story being told. Is there even a story here? It seems like they're just having matches to have matches. What's the story anymore? I don't even know. Well, BC, Carlito is upset because Andrade kind of took his place. Santos was with LWO, but then he went LDF. I mean, you can tell me a million different moving parts to try to sell me that this is a fun story. <laughs> it's just not. They just, they stuffed this in the middle of, of SmackDown like nothing. Santos versus Carlito. Carlito is just taking a simplistic four minute loss. And it leads to, no, I don't remember anything afterwards. Like, there's no reason that I would, oh, man, I got to see LWO and LDF, man. After Carlito lost, this is just is heating up. Oh, man, I, I don't. I don't know. It, it's one of those things where you, you just have to believe WWE doesn't really have anything, right? That, that was the, <laughs> they took it into mania. And now they're like, uh, I don't know. It's like carrying cross. And Bobby Lashley, like they don't know what that Karrion Cross wasn't even on the show last night. Bobby Lashley was playing cheerleader after the Prophets won that fatal four way. Bobby Lashley, who should be like one of the biggest stars in the company by now. <laughs> he should be anyway. Bobby Lashley ran in there like a cheerleader with B-Fab and they just started celebrating with uh, Street Prophets. If you blink, you missed Bobby Lashley. So yeah, yeah, they just... They, they have nothing for these dudes. It's, it's, and that's not good for these groups because there's several wrestlers in each group, LDF and LWO. You better find something quick, Levesque McMahon. It's obviously not going to be for backlash, but I mean, going into the summer, you really want these wrestlers to have something fun so we can all get behind. All right, let's get into it, man. It's main event time. This is Bailey and Naomi. But it would be none of their time when it was all said and done. There was only one person whose time it was. You know, you know, check the watches. It's Tiffy time. Bailey Naomi for the WWE Women's Championship. Naomi is looking great, beautiful, sexy, and oh yeah, ready for a championship match. Bailey, she has a new glow to her as well. And of course, that's illuminated by her newly won championship. At this moment, I'm thinking kick back, relax, enjoy a coffee, and watch these badass chicks kick some ass. And hope that Paul Levesque McMahon gets it right for the finish. And Tiffy Time gets involved and subsequently inserts herself into the title pitcher. So let's see if that came to fruition. The match itself was good. Started slow, but picked up pace and interest as it moved forward. A nice touch was damage control up in a skybox high above. And right next to damage control 
was Cargill and Bel Air in their own skybox, <laughs> but it was like right next door. So it was like, it was just a funny little setup as they're all watching this match from high above. The finish was perfection. Bailey and Naomi are on the outside. And what time is it? I'll say it again as I said earlier. It ain't Vader time. It ain't Hammer time. It ain't clobbering time. It ain't Tony time. It ain't Morphin time. It's Tiffy time. It's ringside and attacks both Naomi and Bailey. The match is nullified. Damage control is loving it. Jade Cargill looks like she wants no part of Tiffany, but Belair ain't scared. She's already taken her earrings off, bro. <laughs> It was hilarious. Like Belair looked like she was going to jump from the skybox into the ring. Earrings were already coming off. Back in the ring, a massive mega double prettiest moonsault ever. And man, guys, this moonsault, she set him up. She lined him up perfectly. The air that she gets, I don't think people understand. Even the bounce from the second rope is i mean she gets so much height just the bounce from the second rope but then the launch from the top rope is literally perfection not many things in the world you can tag or, or put the tag of perfection on but this moonsault is is legit perfection the anatomy of this moonsault and you know how good eos is Eo Sky, it's just a thing of brilliance. <laughs> then you see Tiffany Stratton, and I know she's got background heavily uh, with gymnastics, but damn, this thing is just, it's like a, it's a soaring shooting star of just beauty. <laughs> you put it in slow motion and you just put some Beethoven music behind it. And it's just a, uh, it's just a symphony of perfection. Can I rave about this, this woman anymore? I mean, she is so good. And there was a, there was a moment where the camera caught the championship with Tiffany celebrating. Like Tiffany was in the, on the turnbuckle celebrating, not celebrate, really taunting the crowd, telling them what time it is. And the camera made sure to, to, to get a, the championship right in the same like frame. And it was like mm, one day soon, not yet, not in France. Could you imagine if Bailey's title reign was just transitional and to get it over to Tiffany? I'm not saying as much as I love Tiffany. This is a pro Tiffany Stratton channel. It's a Tiffy time channel. Um, there's no way Bailey should be losing that title in France in just two weeks, but in the future for sure. But Tiffany Stratton doesn't need that title right now. She just doesn't just give her good storylines, put her in the right moments, and she's crushing the game. It's what Tiffany Stratton does. She doesn't need championships right now, but she absolutely should be involved in this match in France for the title triple threat. I'm not even a big fan of Schmaz matches. You guys know that, but this just feels right. I feel they set it up perfectly. Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, it's an out too, by the way. No matter who has to take this L, that is going to suck. But no matter who it is, you can easily just have the Tiffany-Naomi feud. Unfortunately, right before either one are about to win this title, it takes precedent. It's almost like Roman choosing to hit Seth Rollins with the steel chair and not Cody. You know, Tiffany and Naomi at the very end take their eye off the prize and they let their own animosity toward one another kind of fuel itself, and Bailey takes advantage of that. There's so many ways you could save face here, but Naomi gets a massive opportunity in France. Tiffany Stratton is going to be catapulted. This is one of those situations where there's victory in defeat. So relax. I know a lot of the community is going to be tweaking out. Oh, no. They're just going to feed Tiffany Stratton to Bailey. What? Can we just be happy for Bailey, by the way? Let her have a title reign. Let her beat some people. Tiffany is brand new. It looks like, it looks like, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say this for a fact yet, because I thought this about Zia Lee for at least two weeks, and we just saw what happened with her, but it looks like Paul Levesque McMahon sees the value and the talent that he has in front of him with Tiffany Stratton. So it looks like it's going... <sighs> I knew when she lost, 
Naomi defeated her last week. I'm like, what the? F-? But then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna give this a week. This could be th- this setback could be put in play for a major setup, something much better. And sure enough, that's what we're getting, man. I wanted this triple threat for for backlash, and finally, damn it, BC got a match that he wanted. <laughs> so, pretty cool way to end this show with Tiffany Stratton putting SmackDown on her back, rolling it up in a bowl, putting it on her shoulder, and now she's carrying around SmackDown. Because trust me when I say, if you saw last night's show, it is indeed Tiffy time. And we are just about out of time on this review. So with that said, enjoy your weekends. More importantly, whoop the weekend's ass. Until next time, and there will be that next time, Top Guys, where I'll be saying check you. Peace.